Hello and welcome to this exploring session and today we are looking at a series of fragments. Yes, fragmentary plays from uh, from about 1550 onwards. Uh, they're sort of orbiting that uh, mid-Tudor date um, and we have I think four fragments we're going to be looking at today. Uh, we're looking at a fragment which is uh, from a manuscript and is just labelled as part of a play and it's the question we're going to try and answer now is is it part of a play? Do we feel in our guts, in our sort of Scrooge McDuck feeling in, into the coins, uh, whether, whether this, uh, this is a play or not? Uh, we follow that with a fragmentary play uh, uh, called Somebody and Others, or The Spoiling of Lady Verity, or Somebody, Avarice and Minister. Um, uh, that's uh, uh, printed from around 1550. Uh, we then uh, jump to The Cruel Debtor by William Wager. Wag, Wagner, Wagu. Um, uh, that's the last of his plays uh, that we are looking at in these sessions. Uh, he wrote three other reasonably confirmed full-length plays, and this is the, a fragmentary uh, chunk from uh, a fourth. And then finally, we're going to look at a fragment called Love Feigned and Unfeigned. Um, and as I say, many of these titles are, are titles that have been given to these plays. The fragments don't necessarily actually have the titles with them because they're just bits and pieces so we're just going to sort of dance around and see what comes out of it so reading the parts today of these 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 lost plays uh reading flattery and fellowship today is the uh currently lost in ireland uh actor simon nader <laughs> and uh, reading verity simulation and love unfeigned today is Hello, I'm Valentina, and I'm an actor and voiceover artist in London. Uh, reading Rigor and Familiarity today is... Hello, I'm Helen Good. I'm a historian. I'm in London. Uh, reading Avarice and Ophelitis today is... Hi, I'm Alan Scott. I'm neither an actor nor an academic, and I'm based in Suffolk. Today, reading somebody, well, somebody has to read somebody. Somebody at Basilius and feigned love is... Hi, I'm Eric, and I've always wanted to be somebody, so, you know, <laughs> here's my chance. Uh, finally, reading a minister, proniticus and falsehood is... Hello, my name is Lynn Freitas. I'm a college writing teacher, and I live in the very smoky northwestern United States. And I am your host, Robert Crichton, and I'm going to be reading the part of a play. That, now, normally I don't read in these sessions. Um, I, I just do the stage directions. But uh, I didn't have time, or, or for that matter, the will, to uh, modernise the text of this part of a play. Um, it, I say it is merely labelled as that, and it's, it's uh, written out as a long speech. So the question I'm going to put to the room as they listen to me uh, pontificate uh, will be to uh, feel uh, around as to its dramatic potential. Is it one speech from a play or is it perhaps broken, uh, you know, somebody's part that has got squished together? Um, just just general reactions to it uh, before I go into the, the question of whether we do something more with it further down the line, which would require me to actually edit it properly. So, uh, thinking caps on everybody. Uh, while uh, I will read part of a play, circa 1550. Alone and only in a wrong stole have brought to error many a foal. Of God eternal, that is but one in persons three. It is said truly in him is, to him is honour due alone, with praise and worship to him only. God alone hath created man, and only God iron man brought. So man to God only must needs than render due thanks with heart and thought. From God all goodness doth proceed. God only of virtue is the spring. His only grace doth good men lead, and is their strength in each good thing. Hitherto there can no error make, alone, est only without, though wilt, God's order and will, frowardly take to thy confusion and dreadful guilt, as thus I mean, where God declareth, by whom for himself he will honour receive. Beware, 
of only for here it snareth and by mistaking will thee deceive for he that doth such order obey and honor as he is taught by true direction doth honor god only and yet doth pay the same to diverse in due proportion and equin god doth give by other his gifts of grace as he thinketh best and so use man to help his brother alone and only the truth may rest we may not ourselves deceive by number and so call tell that god maketh thee one for god and his minister be never asunder in order unite and operation unity and operation man under god and yet god alone worketh god's pleasure as god's will is so only or alone can make no reason why man as minister may not do that or this only and alone have so been abused to deceive a faith and charity asunder as charity in justification clearly refused hath made religion talk and worldly wonder Yet some may say only and not alone, man's faith doth work his justification with charity promised and much they moan. Men cannot conceive their fond conclusion to maintain their speech, they have no writ, but conceive it in fancy for an evil intent. The sentence hath ne leaming ne wit as they do utter it and by them is meant. But where faith is grounded, signification containeth the holy Moses law excluded. Good men declaring man's justification have wived only to faith and truly concluded. But where charity and faith be set at contention, and a faith alone challengeth to be worker only, it is undoubtedly of Satan and his invention to divide God's gifts and graces fondly. In effect, the bait is in this only thing, whether God that worketh man's justification, as he grieveth man, faith giveth charity working, or charity idle without operation, of charity idle no man doth read, and yet they grant their charity's presence, whereby faith, worketh man's justification and so confesseth indeed working and not working in the same self same sentence for this is a mere and a vain cavillation by cause faith by charity worketh and is lively to say that faith hath all the operation and charity to be but an instrument only in a like speech the wood by fire burneth, and candle eke by fire giveth light. Shall we here gather that wood and candle worketh, and fire doth nothing? No worker can be behind. And if we so say, we must also gather this, that heat and fire be not in fire concerned, but only in wood which by fire burn is, wherein hitherto all men have been deceived. And further, where women by men engender, we must say now that men there have no action but women only, and the reason render, like as faith by charity hath operation, in works of nature where God worketh ever, we are not afraid with God to join company, not idle, but working and so put together causes inferior unto one act many, in the act of grace. When God doth man renew with the light of faith and of charity the life, God only is author that is full true, and only the mean causes a fond foolish strife. God, to heal man, do thus the medicine take, giving faith and charity all in one portion, but the right, wrong judgment, death, thus ye matter take. But only faith there worketh the work of justification, and if thou wilt press, and ask them why, thus they answer and the matter comprehend. Faith, they say in office, is fit, and can only God's mercy, which only justifies, apprehend. 
is not this clear matter plainer and evident to shift from one only to another for by only faith they say is only meant only mercy by correlation of promise faith's brother now if thou cast no skill of correlation he knowest what not what <coughs> apprehend doth clearly signify thou cast not learn thou canst not learn there justification and he perceive what is meant by their faith only thus as they can they link the matter together mercy they say is the promise and promise only can by faith be achieved and so what skilleth it whether faith only or only mercy be thy speech then in god's mercy promise in god's promise is mercy none will gainsay me this that promise by faith is apprehended but yet, if thou, there is yea and nay, in their speech as they handle it, falsely apprehended, for mercy is the heel that God hath promised to forgive and renew man fallen by sin, which men receive when they be justified, both the promise and mercy contained therein. <coughs> Yeah, there's uh, so for the listener at home, there is no indication of where in you know in the in the text of uh, any meaningful punctuation to tell you when a sentence ends. So I was just ploughing forward. It was um, all one long sentence. Yeah, I, I don't think it was originally. It's just this <laughs> text is not is not punctuated. I'm sure if we went through it in more detail, we will figure out where sentences begin and end, uh, or at least some of them. Um, so thoughts about that blur of words that i just threw at you <laughs> um helen well my first one <laughs> sorry so, yeah so me mm, yes yeah, so you were looking like you were about to speak so i sort of oh i see um yeah well it struck me that it could be an introduction to a play about practically anything allegorical or religious <laughs> You know, I mean, we could have, be, it could be then followed by all these attributes that, 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 that are named here um, as characters. Uh, or it could be a creation play. I, I mean, it, it, it could be, it could be almost anything. But it, I certainly didn't get the impression that there was more than one character. I mean, it could be that it's shared out among various characters, but they're all saying the same thing. But it does, the meaning does zip along uh, fairly recently. I'm trying to work out how women by men in gender that men have that, that men there have no action, but women only. I'm go, going to have to go into that at some depth later, but... Um, yes, I raised an eyebrow while reading that. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wasn't watching your eyebrows. I was watching the text. It may have been an internal eyebrow, to be fair. I, 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 cannot, I cannot necessarily attest as to what my eyebrows were doing. Simon was going to say something then, Alan. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, it's typical, isn't it, for my first one back after an absence of several weeks. It's one of my favourite things, which is essentially a bloody sermon. But um, <laughs> <laughs> one of my pet hates of plays. But no, it, it struck me as being more of a kind of almost like a transcribed sermon. I, I know it, it wouldn't have been, but um, it, it's one of my... One of my uh, um, <laughs> kind of hated hated things to see in literature but uh, it, it struck me as, as uh, very similar to some of the other things that we've obviously uh, covered over the over the many months of uh, theological plays but it felt like almost a, it could be from a pulpit um, dramatically perhaps it's one character from a pulpit yeah there isn't there is a good question actually we haven't done on this forum any uh, actual sermons you know we've got plenty of sermons available um, and actually to see whether the rhetorical style is similar um mm. i can't make that assessment because we haven't done any um so that that is a possibility um but whether there is a distinct difference in style um i cannot speak to that alan 
I was just wondering whether this is actually one of um, something like the sort of the epilogues that uh, Bale used to do at the end of his plays. Um, it's too long to be a bear one. Um, <laughs> bales are actually remarkably short, but I think you're right in the sense, uh, Helen was saying a prologue. I felt it was more <laughs> something at, a, at the end of the mm. play when oh. they really mm. go into the theology because, you know, you, there's no point yeah. leaving now because uh, play's nearly over. So, <laughs> the, you know, you, you end load this kind mm. of theological dump. Um, and we've got a lot of interludes that do that. Ah. Uh. So it could be. It feels that way to me, but I, I don't know. Any other thoughts? Valentina, do you, ha do you have any opinions on this particular speech? <laughs> Honestly, whatever it is, is far too long. <laughs> <laughs> and yet it's all we have. Um... <laughs> God knows. As an acting exercise, I have to recommend it. Um, not for public consumption, but as just something to just try and figure out how this speech functions. I mean, I was doing that in real time. Um, but actually to sit down and try and punctuate this is, is, is going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well done because the spelling is all over the damn place. Mm. Oh, um, no, 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 no. I won't have that. Spelling's very consistent. Mm. <laughs> One of the problems is I think the original may have been italic rather than black letter. Mm. I say this, uh, this, this is a, uh, uh, this I'm fairly certain is manuscript uh, text, so. Well, then it, it's odd mm. because if it's been re whoever's done it has mistaken, taken B for H yeah. in a lot of places. And you normally get that where you've got, digital character recognition and you're doing if you're doing italic it happens a lot mm. um italian rather than um which which would fit with it being an extra part to the play mm. these were quite honestly often distinguished i if if it's been taken from a manuscript then i'm but of course it could have been taken from a manuscript by somebody and then their typescript was then read by optical, or did you type it out again? Um, I, I, I uh, well, we'll go into that another. I don't think the listener at home cares. Um, okay, so, sorry, <laughs> it's, sorry, it's, I'm uh, rabbiting uh, it's, it's, it's all right, we, 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 we should uh, try to remember to try and keep this entertaining for the viewer at home. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there are all sorts of questions there. Um, yes, it's, 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 it's untidy in its current form, um, and uh, yes, there's work to be done. Do we think, uh, do we feel that it, it felt reasonably like it, it could live in a play? It doesn't feel, there's nothing screaming at me saying this is not performable. Any, anyone go against that as a thought? I think after a play rather than in a play, but that's... Yeah. I'd probably go with Adam's uh, essay log. Hmm. A scene from towards the end of a play. Um... <laughs> No one's getting that reference. Okay, I'll move on. Um, so, uh, any other thoughts on this fragment before we move on to saying with a bit more meat? Eric? Well, there's some parts of it that sort of, well, I don't know if it's the way it was formatted or whatever, but it just kind of like, it's like stanzas. So like, I'm, I, I don't know if that's just the, the way it was written originally, but it's sort of um, thematically sort of, like, like it starts off with God alone, blah, blah, blah. And then it moves on to charity, faith. And then it's sort of like, it moves through all the things that it wants to say, but in terms of like, I don't know, poetic form kind of almost. It possibly, possibly. I'm, I'm slightly uncertain about the way it's currently formatted as to whether that actually has an actual meaning rather than just being helpful. Um, so, but no, it's a good point. Um, but it may be quite formally chunked out uh, in that way uh, and it might be using a verse uh, the, the 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 stanzic form to do that um but it also might not i, I got very que questionable about how it was uh, uh, laid out as i went because sometimes it sort of works and sometimes it sort of didn't um so uh, anything else lots of rhymes mm. keen on them Qu keen on them Whoever well, this author was. Makes it easier to learn. Mm. 
Okay, we're going to put part of a play to one side. Uh, we've made our first look at it. I don't see it has a, an enormous life after this. We'll probably, I'll probably do a, 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 a neater version and get some other ball bugger to re record it for the podcast. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, so we're going to leap forward to somebody and others. Now, that isn't actually what the player is called. We don't know what the player is called. We don't have the title. Uh, but it has been variously called somebody and others or the spoiling of Lady Verity, or somebody, Avarice, and Minister. There are lots of little lacunas and damages to the text. Um, so um, every so often I might make some sort of scrunchy, rippy noises uh, when, when a big gap appears. Say the words as you can, say the bits of the words as you can, um, and let's just see what we go. We have looked at this before on the podcast. Um, and come up with some possible conclusions, which I'm starting to backtrack on. So I'm quite interested to in see what this room makes of it. Uh, Alan, who was there the first time we read it, remained silent until the rest of the room has had their, their go. Uh, so we're assuming that the first speaker is Minister, and uh, Minister, uh, please speak. I promise thee I will thee curse. As for that, I shall not be the worse of a penny, for I pass not on it yet, nor yet of your curse, saving your honor, and uh, for all this to profit is no more possible than for to drink and equitable. Is not he worthy pastorage to lead, that hath no science, nor neither to write or read? It is no longer time here for to commune. I will be gone till the space opportune. Was here any strife or business? I heard between you express. Would anybody do you injury? Noble Lord, tell me hardly. Fear not. Do not your honour recule, for I am she that most often doth rule over the people. My name is Avarice. O oh, gentlemen of right high price, I have been wont in body and soul to the people truth to show openly. Late to go to rest, early for to rise, Honour and goods daily to acquise, to be served and not for to serve, reverence and praise for to conserve, with benefices to live in a state, rich lodgings and victuals delicate, dulcet wine, pompous array, without travail for to rest alway, save only to keep my benefice. But verity to my prejudice is contrary to me in all things and would have me change my living, which doth me grieve full inwardly. Noble Lord, alas, and why I all your doings to defame. I marvel that she dare set her mind against she wants to be unkind. For if that she did as, her du as is her duty only with the twinkling of your eye, she ought afore you for to shake of your dignity grudge for to make. It is the people that should go bare, poorly, needy, and of ill fare. Truly, if you will do by my device, ye shall do verity no more service. I have found weapon better to your pay. Good Sir Avarice, my thought is alway how for to procure profit, and in my heart I have great spite that verity should me contrary. Therefore, I pray you heartily, provide me another mistress. That I will do with all my business. I promise you, bring her hither. She and I will come both together. Sister Simony, our Lord, you save. For to find you great joy I have. Go with me, good gentle sister. For to comfort, good minister. He has forsake verity. And I think verily that he would have you to his lover and mistress. And you to be his governess. Come on. We will hear his advice. If he will come into my service, he shall lack no goods at all. God speed you both, great and small. Here have I brought, as ye may see, that served her in acuity. But she would that verity were read, and under the ground to be hid, that she might never more appear, and that people should never, her uh, never hear. People I do hold in my hands, surely, but I cannot overcome somebody. My sister Simony shall retain of her garments as do appertain to a faithful and holy preacher. 
because that the people shall take her a verity seeing the clothing but who discovers her anything shall forthwith be punished and in the fire shall be roasted as St. Lawrence till he die. I will serve my Lady Simony, for I will seek none other mistress. This sith I have profit and riches, I pass not of the feminine. Simony, entreat I grant, uh, I you grant into the church when that ye please, and you in avarice shall keep the keys. Alway, lo, I think I it reason. And here they spy Verity, spy all from a distance, Verity. Come, lady, over long season have you ruled in this majesty. You have put minister from his dignity. Your nest shall no, be no longer here. At once put all of you, you all, in this gear. For it is convenient to declare people all our intent. Which counterfeit soiled and of and to our church he cannot be twist except he do all our penance and satisfy it to the ordinance as is declared in our canons synodals decrees and pardons now without any more delay let us rid her out of the way that this wise troubleth men's wit let us cast her into a pit and cover her so close and plain that she may never rise again. Do your devour, are you require. She ought to be cast into a fire. Why stand we so long about this matter? People shall not hear her clatter for of a long time, which maketh me merry. The time is come that I did prophesy how that I should be hid many years, and that many would give their ears to lessings and vanities, to false doctrine and trumperies. Alas, do ye not see how the time is come, very now, of the warning of Jesus Christ, for the false prophet of Antichrist, the which should come in false array, outward a simple sheep alway, and within wolves ravening, and then evidently giving their fruits, saith he, shall them declare, and with purpose what their hearts are, may the thistle good figs bear. And that's all we have. Now, uh, I don't know whether Verity says all of that from within the pit she's just been thrown in or whether this is before she gets thrown into the pit um, by the, the forces of Avarice uh, Minister uh, and, and, uh, and Simone, Sister Simony. Um, there, there are a few interesting things that I will bring up later, but let's see what the room thinks, not including Alan, who's been here before. Uh, start with Simon. I'm assuming Verity would be um, Veritas, as in truth, mm -hmm. seeing as everyone else. So she, she's she been condemned for speaking truth, perhaps? Yeah, put her in the pit, she's saying awkward things. Hmm. Hmm. That was, yeah, that, that's really, uh, that was just what I wanted to ask. Um, interesting. Mm. Interesting piece. Uh, I just uh, 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 other thoughts first. Let, let me not say things. I, I, I don't want to lead the witnesses. Helen, um, how se how secure is the date? Uh, reasonably secure, I think. Um, it's circa fifteen fifty, so in that sort of area. Why? So what we're talking about is the second half of Edward the Sixth reign. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Which means that um, this is an attack on uh, simony and on um, the avarice of ministers. Now, I don't know which side this attack is coming from or why, but it was at a time when the um, revenues of ministers was getting thoroughly uh, pillaged by the government who were taking all the chantry money from the vicars uh, and other ministers' salaries in order to use in um, the Scottish war. So I would say on the whole that this is a, a highly political piece as well as being about 
something else, which I'm not sure of. But, um, I mean, simony has always been a problem in the church. Uh, but the, the, there was a tremendous problem at exactly this time. But whether this is an anti-Catholic or an anti-Protestant, I, I haven't a clue. Yes, uh, I mean, the, the, the absolute, um, you know, that's the best guess that uh, we've got. Uh, we've got limits of, of a good um, 30 years each way. Uh, <laughs> well, not 30 oh. years each way. Um, 34 to 64 is sort of the, the dating range. Oh, well, in that case, it might be anybody. Might anybody's be anybody's guess. But the, the, best, the best guess is around about here because of where the concentration, I think, of other plays of this kind are yeah, living. Well, so... Um, yeah. Uh, it's interesting, we haven't mentioned of, the, of people I do hold in my hand, surely. And I'm, you know, it's reminding me of Res Public as uh, the people. So wondering whether mm. that's a character or whether that's a generalisation. It's an interesting question. It's irritating at the beginning of line, so capitalised by its own nature of where it's placed in a sentence, uh, rather than as a clue whether it's a, a, a character or not. Um, other thoughts about this, um, this, uh, this uh, text so far? Lynn? Just a, a question. I, <laughs> who is somebody? <laughs> because uh, he seems to be on side with the bad guys, but then the minister says, people I do hold in my hands or bands, surely, but I cannot overcome somebody. Uh, so, like, who is this somebody? I mean, the minister well, is a corrupt minister, and there's avarice, and we talk about simony and Oh, we're all not too keen on Verity, but yeah. It's a very, very good question of which I think I have an answer. Um, but I'm going to um, hold on that for a moment um, uh, and uh, see other thoughts. Helen, uh, oh no, I saw Eric, Eric hasn't spoken yet. I'll come to you, Helen, in a second. Mm -hmm. Eric, uh, I was just wondering, is this supposed to be that this wise troubleth men's wit or that this vice troubleth men's wit? Um, it's probably closer to wise, um, because it was a questionable FS question mark, uh, in my mind. Uh, so it could have been wife, um, but it, that didn't seem to make sense. Um, that, so it's that in this way, trouble if men's wit is, I think how it's supposed to read it is a bit of a sod of a line though. But excellent question. Helen. Uh, in the last speech, Verity. Uh, the time has come very now of the warning of Jesus Christ from the false prophet of Antichrist. Um, I, I would like to say here that I have yet to discover a time in the whole of history when a sizable chunk of the population didn't think they were in or about to be in the last times. <laughs> I mean, Even it today. is... Yeah, well, especially today, <laughs> but um, but in some part there there are always people who believe they were. I mean, uh, William Cecil, who was certainly alive and very active in this period, whichever way you take it, is um, was a believer that they we were about to be in the last times. Mm. Uh, the uh, thoughts, Eric. I was going to say this could also be written about uh, Donald Trump, but I don't know, like <laughs> false doctrine and Trumperies. Mm. But I don't know if that's just me. <laughs> I don't think it's that forward thinking. Um. No, I was hoping that actually people should not hear his clatter of a long time, which maketh me merry, could uh, refer to uh, Boris Johnson currently as well. <laughs> I, I, I so. think you've got to remember that minister is um, uh, okay. He is in theory a member of the, uh, the the clergy, but he's just someone of high office in general terms as well. So yeah, it, it att attaches itself to uh, to all um, all uh, all ranks. Uh, Alan. Yeah, I mean, I I must admit. Uh, Having heard it, I do vaguely remember doing some work on this some time ago, but it had completely gone from front memory. And I think we did have a discussion about whether the minister was actually referring to a clergyman or an official of the state. And you could read it in either direction. Uh, yeah. or, in, or in some cases, actually both, given the double hatting that went on in some cases. 
Yeah, at, at both both probably. Um, uh, yeah, he's 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 definitely talking about benefices and and things. And mm. uh, I, I've, I've, w those who've listened to the podcast will know that I, I thoroughly poo pooed Alan when he suggested that. Um, and he was uh, yeah. Uh, Helen wants to uh, leap in on this. No, I I I, I would join in the poo poo chorus. Um, uh, I, I think here, uh, minister minister of the crown wasn't a, a, a phrase that was used. Um, I think this minister is definitely a a, 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 a religious benefice holder, as is uh, uh, and simony was very specifically the sin or, or, or whatever you may call it of holding more than one benefice at a time mm. um, um yeah sorry. also for clarity uh, 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 in the in the original podcast alan, alan was all for the the ministers uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 church side of things and i was all for uh, minister i was i was horribly wrong on the podcast i did correct oh. it um, oh, I see. so uh, but um yes i think i think it's absolutely yes it's uh, it's a uh, religious office uh primarily eric yeah i was just gonna say it's supported by saying is not he worthy past the urge to lead that hath no science neither to write or read so it's like i don't know if they're talking about the ministry here but i mean it sounds like they're trying to corrupt him anyway so mm. yeah okay uh so uh just a question on on somebody so this is the theory we came up with last time and i'm going to throw it at the room i don't think somebody uh you may notice in brackets at the uh, beginning of the play i think somebody leaves at that point i think the person who is labeled as somebody later on in the play is actually simony and it's a miss because oh. ah. they're talking about lady simony and she's in on their game and somebody has exited um you know who's either doesn't know who they are and is a, uh, a you know doesn't appreciate um that they are bad people or he doesn't like them um, and that I say that the the script is just wrong, and that the two somebody uh, bits of dialogue is actually simony. But I wanted to throw, didn't want to tell the room that first. Do people go with that or not? It, it makes sense. Somebody says, "If he will come into my service, he shall lack no goods at all." That would that be something that makes complete sense coming out of simony's mouth. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 And the first speech too, the first somebody speech too. Oh really? Um, yeah. yeah. Is he not worthy pastorage to lead that hath no science neither to write nor read? I mean, this is this is classic, you know, corruption in the holding of benefices. But it is also somebody who exits at that point. Probably. I will be uh, gone till a space opportune. So it does sound like they're exiting at that point. So right. I'm just wondering whether the, the compositor has just um, got confused and just kept giving S person when it got uh, turned to printing. Uh, Simon? Yeah, the only other logical thing for me would be somebody being a device for kind of every man for, for the people. But I don't think that really rings true. So I would, I would be very surprised if you're not right, actually, and it is supposed to be so many. But uh, it's the only thing I can think of. If if it was like a modern mistranslation or a computer algorithm that's put somebody instead of something, that makes oh, sense. It, Unless it, it, to be because fair, I it, wouldn't is, have... it is in the original. I went back to check. It is in the original. <laughs> oh, it is in the original. Okay. So, so yeah. Very I, old typo. Yeah, I wondered if somebody would have been in the lexicon at the time for a per. You would have thought it'd be a personage or something like that. Um, but a member of the Commons or something would be the only logical thing. But I don't know what particular role they would serve in something like this, where everyone else is very specific unless it's the common man's view, but nothing seems to support that from anything that that person says. <laughs> now, there is a way of answering this question, but um, uh, I haven't been able to get a copy of it um, because this is in theory a translation of a French uh, text. Um, so we could actually uh, go and compare, but I haven't been able to uh, acquire the French text to actually be able to do that. So that might be something something to pass over to Dan. To Where's see Dan? Hunt, yeah. hunt, hunt for it because he's... <laughs> He has the technology and he is in the right part of the world. <laughs> so we could be uh, stumbling around in the dark here and there might be a much wider explanation of why people are saying things what they're saying. But that's just the, the thought we had last time and um, we'll air it. Any final thoughts on this fragment, Eric? 
Well, also, uh, the minister refers to simony and avarice, and it kind of doesn't make sense for them to not be on stage. Um, like, um, simony, I entreat, entreat you, I grant into the church when that please, or entry, uh, whatever that means. Uh, and then uh, you, to you, avarice, she'll keep the keys and so on. So I, that would kind of make sense for simony to be somebody, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. it definitely seems to be on stage. Uh, mm. Regardless, no, it might be they're just a silent character who doesn't, say, or in this section hasn't said anything. It's entirely possible it's just that. Any any other thoughts? Um, don't know what happens to Verity. I'm assuming Verity is released and everything turns out fine. I, I'm, I'm going to go with that as where it goes. Um, I feel that this is this is sort of about a third of the way into the play. That's sort of my feeling. That's my uh, Scrooge McDuck. Um, is that what she had prophesied? Because she, she. Sorry, saying Is that yeah? Is that what she had, what she had prophesied that she's going to be hidden for a while and then come back? Yeah, that would make sense. That yeah. would that would suggest that she says that after being tossed into the into the the pit, um, that, so that she can no longer can trouble wise men's wit. Um, good rhyming there. Good rhyming. Um, okay, we're going to go on to The Cruel Debtor. Cruel Debtor by William Wager. Uh, this is a few years later. This is around 1565, 1560s, early years of the reign of Elizabeth. A very weird time in the drama. Um, there, there's all sorts of random stuff going on, and, and a lot of it's written by William Wager. Uh, we've done three of his plays in the exploring sessions. All of them have raised lots of discussion points and lots of questions that we have not necessarily got around to answering yet um, because they're, they're really quite weird in places and uh, the problem with this text is it comes in several different fragments um, now I put them together with what I hope is the correct order um, and the gaps between the fragments is debatable so uh, there are uh, they are noted as fragment links in your script um so and there might be one that isn't yeah i've got text break question mark um i think it's mostly runs all the way through in a uh, relatively straightforward fashion um but then there's i think one actual break but it seems to actually function as a unit i don't actually have a problem with it i'll just keep going all the way through um and uh, yeah so i think it would be fair to say that there's a bit of a con going on here i'm, I'm gonna give you that bit of a clue or well, they're setting up a con between various people there are some na naughty people and there are some less naughty people um <laughs> and this is mostly around what would probably be the central central uh, plot which sort of we start engaging with uh later on so without further ado on stage we have rigor and flattery so we don't know for certain that the opening dialogue is but a rigor but we can assume Pretty much certainly is. To them thou shalt be welcome, I warrant thee. Yea, and in great acceptation also, said he. Now the thing whereof I was so angry and mad was this. I forgave the counsel of that of him I had. The goodliest thing in the world is communication. For what bringeth things to our memoration? Thou and I had like fortune with Basileus. After that manner to thee I will plainly discuss. I remember the saying of Seneca in a tragedy, worthy to be printed of such as love's flattery. Fraris sublimi regnat in ola. The higher that the court is and the more of nobility, the more false is therein and the more iniquity more flattery is not in the world reigning than is in the court of any noble king now basilius is a king of most honoration in whose house i thought to have my habitation but i came not so soon within basilius palace but they disclosed me openly and to my face and when they had once so bewrayed my name i might no longer tarry in that court for shame then as thou didst i took my friend's counsel asking him where it was best for me to dwell he named them of whom we have spoke before saying that with them you may dwell evermore and even now my purpose was to go thither of all good fellowship, let us go together. I do not pass in King Basileus' house to dwell. 
I doubt not, but we shall even, that we shall do even as well. But Sarah, what didst thou see simulation? This day he and I had communication. He promised me straight away to come hither. Our friends, we should go together. In the world is not so false a neighbor as he, for by him all states of people deceived be. In bishops and pastors he is humility, and yet must be full of pride and crudelity. In all the clergy he seemeth to be holiness, when in them is a multitude of wickedness. In magistrates he seemeth to be affability. Yet there lurketh disdain and austerity. In the commons he seemeth to be neighbourliness, yet in there envy, hate, and covetousness. I dare say that his deceit further doth wonder than all the dominion of King Alexander. Deceiveth he so, and is never deceived again? Seldom, or never that I hear of, I tell thee plain. By the mass, it were a good deed to deceive him. And I will tell thee which way we may do it, too. Thou saidst, yet he will be here without doubt today. That is without question. Truly, I dare say. Well, when he cometh, we will semble out to fall. We will strike one at another as though we did brawl. What we mean by that, he will greatly wonder. Then he will come, intending us to sunder, Thou shalt strike at me, and I at thee will swack, but let all the stripes light upon his back. Of good fellowship, let it be so, even indeed. Let the sembling knave have somewhat for his mead. Hark, by my faith and truth, I hear him spit. And rigor gets in a little too early, beginning to fight. <laughs> Nay, hold thy hand, thou may it not fight yet. We must be fighting when he doth enter needs, or else for the sport I will not give two threads. Here enter simulation. Dominus fabiscum in principio erat verbum, yea? Are you fighting? I purpose non here to come, nemo tuta se periculis offere potesse. He that putteth himself in forward cannot be sure, but putteth himself in hazard. A oh, horse, and by the mass, it shall cost thee thy life. I will cut thee as small as a knave with my knife. Good Lord, what meaneth these folks to fight? Hold your hands, masters, I pray you no more. I trow that it is not best to approach too near, lest perchance we like some of their evil cheer. I will teach you, horse and villain, to meddle with me. Doubt thou not, but even with thee I will be. Passion of God, one of them is my cousin Fluttery. I will see him take no hurt here, verily. For God's sake, gentlemen, hold your hand. This is an honest man, you shall understand. Horse or knave, comes thou to take his part? And he beats simulation. You have broken my head, I pursue your heart. Art thou meddling between us, naughty knave? Somewhat for thy presumption thou shalt have. No more, good cousin, for God's passion, no more, alas, I am your cousin, simulation. For the body of God, hold thy hand, rigor. If thou be a man of thy hand, strike no more. I ween we have hurt my cousin by the mass. I had lever than twenty pound, it had not come to pass. I cannot be content till I have a leg or arm. And here flattery must hold rigor. But at this time, for his sake, I will do no more harm. Alas, since I was born, did never men saw me beat. I fear yet I shall never after this day more bread eat. Oh, my arm, my arm! Now, alas, what shall I do? I win that my backbone be broken in two. It is madness to meddle between men in their fury. They know not their own father when they be angry. Furor irac mentem precipitant. Fury and wrath, as in Virgil, I find do withdraw and precipitate a man's mind. In faith, cousin, if I had known that it been you, I would not have hurt you for the price of a cow. Alas, good cousin, now, by my truth, I am sorry. I promise you, cousin, you are all my joy and glory. By my faith and truth, you will not believe how the soreness of your back doth my back grieve. The stripes that on your arms and shoulders did light, I wish them on mine own. By God and by this night, a good cousin, cousin, I pray you, be of good cheer. Let me see your arms. 
do any of your stripes appear? Oh, a vengeance on your false, subtle, smiling heart. Full like a false knave, you can play your part. Of little falsehood, I truly I had probation before I learned it of you, simulation. This was done of a set purpose, I dare say, but a trust to it, I will be even with you one day. To deceive such one as is known deceivable is no deceit as by thee now is probable. All the world you deceive, your cousin doth say, thinking it not possible to deceive you anyway. Then I, hearing that you were so cunning in deceit, to deceive you again at time I did wait. Lo, hear, see. He that to deceive all his mind doth cast, by some mean is deceived himself at the last. Put me in no fault, cousin, I you desire, for rigour so to do did me instantly require. I trust, cousin, that you will forgive me for this once, for I will do no more, so I warrant you by these bones. I forgive you as Christian men their brother, till they spy a time to do one shrewd turn for another. Hang me if I wait not for you a knavish touch here, or it shall cost me all that is in my pouch, a vengeance so new for working of the same, for you have almost made my arms and back lame. God requireth no more but a penitent heart. Mary, but he would require more if he felt smart. And here entereth O Felitus. Peace, no more words. Yonder cometh a gentleman. By Jesus, I will be even with you both if I can. Do what thou canst. I set not by thee a louse. It is a gentleman of King Basilius' house. He is not merry. Something without doubt is amiss. If thou wilt be still, you shall know what the cause is. Let us assemble ourselves to be persons of gravity. I could find in my heart to disclose your naivety. By my faith I knew myself to escape harmless. I would declare to your shame all your wickedness. We may be glad at the heart verily, that thou art as far forth as we in knavery. Wherefore, if any of our feats thou wilt disclose, the worst pain and shame shall light on thine own nose. Good Lord, I am undone and all mine. I have lived like a gentleman all my life. But now am I like to come to utter ruin. Yea, and all my goods, children and wife, he that would hang me or kill me with a knife, I would forgive him, yea, even with a good will. For I am not worth so much as an oyster shell. The higher that any man presumeth to climb, the sore is his hurt when he chances to fall. Would to God that I looked upon that, this in time, then had I not been so miserable and thrall. I had not the grace to be wise and political, and never minded to gather any good or treasure, only my heart was set to live in pleasure. I thought myself so much in favour with the king, trusting his goodness only from day to day, ever thinking that I should want nothing, and also impossible that ever I should decay. I spent still, borrowed of the king, promising to pay. But now Pernitticus <coughs> has summoned me to an account. And alas, my debts do all my goods surmount. Sirs, hear you not. This is a fit matter for us. Speak amongst yourselves a good way off. If we had imagined among us a whole year, we could not have such a thing against Basilius as we have occasion now in this man here. Basileus loveth none of us, it doth well appear, and as it seemeth by this man's behaviour, unto him he oweth no very great favour. Now to talk with him is a time convenient, for any man being in sorrow and desolation to hear good counsel will be glad and diligent, namely in a matter of peril and dubitation. Let us go unto him, and by his communication we shall know more, and then, as we do in him see, so in our counsel friendly to him we will be. God speed you, sir, and you are welcome to this place. By my faith you are welcome as my heart can think. 
Alack, you are not merry, as seemeth by your phrase. Wilt please you a cup of good wine to drink? Will please you go to the good wife of the clink? To speak of good wine in London, I dare say, is no better wine than there was once today. Vero autem defatecit gata. <laughs> Apologies for my shocking Latin. Vero autem defatigato. Magnum robo finum auget. And we're just going to pause there because we think that's where there's the uh, actual text break um, in, in, in the narrative. So we've got sort of um, potential con of this, uh, this chap who's uh, not got any money. Um, but we also have the setup earlier of, um, of simulation of the mock fight just so that they can beat the crap out of him. Because, you know, he got in the way. It's his own fault. Um, uh, which is a fascinating bit of comedy business. Um, so yeah, uh, thoughts about um, these vices because they're all they're all a bit vicey, aren't they? Uh, who wants to leap in, Eric? Uh, well, I was going to say that, but uh, the names are kind of suggestive of what they do because, like, oh, not rigor and flashway, but like Ophiletis in Greek means like debtor, and Basileos means king. Which is very, which is very useful for um, people who speak Greek, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that yes. is useful. It is, yes. Um, I d it'd be an interesting question: how many people in the audience would get that? Um, uh, yeah, the there's time. a layers, probably. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that I I would have made the connection because of King James's tract, you know, several decades later. Basilicon Doron was that the king's mm -hmm. gift. So, but most people were Greekless, even even educated people uh, wrote and spoke Latin, but um, but not a lot of Greek scholars in 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 Northern Europe at that point. So it's interesting that they're Greek names. Rigor, I don't get the sense, I don't, I, obviously he's not a good guy, mm. but, but, but yeah, he's not a vice. I mean, rigor, rigor has much more of a positive valence now than it, than it did then, I think. Um, uh, but rigor, rigor might mean like harshness or, you know, or excessively harsh punishment or inju maybe even sort of shading towards injustice. I was thinking more of obstinacy. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, failing rigor, failing to listen to reason. Mm, interesting. It's mm. funny, it kind of strikes me as being uh, several facets of the political body or the body politic, if you will. <laughs> Simulation, mm. flattery, <laughs> rigor, if that is obstinance as well. Maybe these are things that are, uh, I don't know, either commentary or <laughs> or supposedly uh, uh, in support of being like my <laughs> at the time. They're, they're, they've all been, they don't have an inner court. Mm. This is the thing. They don't, they, they're, they're looking for a way to get into the court because they've all been sort of semi banished or whatever um so they're looking for a way back in um, ah. which is so the idea that they're all courtiers mm. flattery fits that very well i mean again it has a very respublica vibe to it doesn't it um which is basically the, the primary act act one and act two the primary question there is how do the despicable people wheedle their way into positions of power so there's a bit of an analog there um Mm. I, I, I do like that it's just the way it's all set up as a sort of long and short cons that are going on here is that you know that it's just basically yeah we're gonna sort of um we're gonna do this 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 game at the beginning so we can you know get a simulation and and, and who's uh you know apparently you, you can detect any kind of lie um and sort of go yeah <laughs> bam um, and then they're sort of they're drawing in um, the debtor as well, um, and going to use him uh, perhaps for things. Eric, I saw a hand. Yeah, I was going to say like halfway through. I think it was when Flattery was talking about being like banished from court. I think there's like a weird switch of like 
focus because they go from like yeah um you know he d- there's no like flattery in court but there's deception so it's like what's going on there uh, i'm not sure i don't know yeah mm-hmm. any other thoughts before we complete the final fragment of this play <clears throat> uh valentina i quite like the you can't connor con men bit mm. like resolution in that i wonder if that was set up for something that happens later on in the play yeah because in like to show that simulation actually sees if people are being aligned yeah there's a big question about how many of the lies are aside because there's there's quite a few lines where it looks like they're going to the audience and just going oh i'll get them um, <laughs> yeah so yeah I, I i think that that might be that simulation is is actually again dissembling to Mm-mm. to the people around him going uh you know he he actually has twigged um Mm-mm. and uh, he's only thing. telling the audience that he has also i found it very strange that they put this play put this play in london is that what they're saying i in, mean the good wife of the clink this is the liberty of the clink this is the south bank mm, southern in london yeah i dare yeah. say yes why, why is it odd that it should be in london uh, I suppose it's the Be- Be- Basileus is the king. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe it's supposed to be historical. I don't recall him within the pantheon of extended uh, made up kings. Yeah, but it just means king, doesn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, he could be, yeah, he could be a. Well, if, if we're thinking on this as a semi morality play, then maybe he is representing kingship maybe he will mm. have been performed as a specific king uh, mm. had a names then. of royals have been changed to avoid the threat of execution yes <laughs> uh yes no that's a good point actually yes there's a, there's there's no there's no reason why it should be in in london but then you know <coughs> story now yeah mention london it'll get a laugh um yeah it's just down the road over there we're in it um you know okay let's go into the final um fragment um so we can assume there's a little bit of a break here while uh, the debtor has been drawn into the plans of the vices in some fashion um uh, before the uh, and uh, there's all sorts of potential entrances and exits so um we seem to have lost simulation and flattery uh, we seem to have gained uh, Basileus and Proniticus at some point. Um, so, uh, Ophelitus speaks first. It was time to have in readiness all thing, for yonder cometh Basileus, my lord and king. As far as we can, let us stand aside till he sendeth for you. Let us yonder abide. I thank you, Bronticus, for your diligence. I doubt you not, but your pains we will recompense. I am pleased with the accounts that you have given. None of your books nor bills shall be forsaken. The most part of my debtors have honestly paid, and they that were not ready I have generally paid. If it please your grace, we have not finished your mind. There is one of your greatest debtors yet behind. We have perused the parcels in your books set, and we find him 10,000 talents in your debt. So we assigned him before your grace to come and to make a reckoning for the whole sum. I, I win it be that unthrifty fellow of Philetus. Yea, truly, if it like your grace, the same it is. I, command him, I commanded him to be ready here in place that we might bring him before your grace. With, with certainty? I'm guessing I don't know. I would have him sought and before mine own presence to be brought. I perceive that he is even here at hand. I see that in a readiness yonder he does stand. Cause him before us in his own person to appear. It shall not be long before he do be here, before he be here. Pluck up your heart and be of good cheer. Fear not, I warrant you, good fortune is near. Ophelitus, it is the King Basilius' commandment that you come before his majesty now incontinent. 
I am in readiness truly with all humility to come into the presence of his majesty. I pray you, sir, speak a good word for him to the king. He knoweth that I am his own in all things. God save your life, the fountain of nobility. All hail, the very patron of magnanimity. Blessed be you, the author of all worthiness. Honour and praise to you, the headspring of goodness. O oh, most mighty, most valiant and noble king, God save you, God save you, of all virtue the spring. Whom hast thou brought into our presence with thee? If it like your grace, his name is Humility. Yea, from his heart I am never absent, nor I think never shall be by his intent. In our accounts taken by our steward you do know, what a sum of money unto us you do owe. Have you brought the hither sufficient payment to make your account after our commandment? Oh, sir, I beseech you to be merciful to me, for I knowledge myself so far in your debt to be, that all I have is not sufficient. I have a quarter of my debts to make payment. Weep, body of God, can you not weep for a need? You must look piteously if you intend to speed. If you cannot weep, I will weep for you. Oh, 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 I pray you be good to us now. What mean you in this place to play such a part? Oh, sir, I declare the effect of this man's meek heart. There is no more the matter, but only this. Thou art a riotous person, doubtless of Philetus. Pride and presumption here too have thee brought. Much to spend and lash out was ever thy thought. A sumptuous table thou wouldst keep every day. Beyond thy degree thou didst exceed in array. That I may speak one word, please it your majesty. Say whatsoever you will. We give you liberty. But we never will find out what he said. <laughs> um, I, what I really like here is, is Rigger just going, no, 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 that's not how you do it. Can you do some crying? Come on, come, come on. We rehearsed this earlier. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'll show you how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's using this debtor as a sort of routine which is sort of, or seems to be, it's, it's sort of weird. Um, I find it interesting. Uh, Alan. Just a quick question. Given that we've now effectively um, relabeled Basilius and um, my character from the Greek names as being archetypes rather than necessarily specific characters, is there a similar one with uh, Prinaticus? Well, I'm guessing it's, it could be like the sort of, the sort of, bas well, not bastardized, but like a random, a really bad form of pronia, which is like to, to take care of something to, to, you know, welfare. But I don't know if that would sort of... He's a servant, so that sort of fits. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, in the sense that everybody's name has a meaning. Uh, yeah. Just some of them are more obscured than others. Yeah. I'm very unhappy about that first eye. It doesn't look right. The first eye? It protonotius or pronotius. Noticus. Pronoticus. Uh, I don't like it, but I don't know why. I, I don't like most of the names, to be honest. They're an absolute sod to say. <laughs> hmm. Um, but I do like rigor continuing uh, the general listen, listen. No, this is how you do it. The general con man element of rigor is, um, you know, isn't he the one who's explaining how the fight should happen? You know, going, no, you've got to fight now. Uh, before he comes in, we've got to already be fighting before the entrance. Yeah. I've not yeah. done a play before. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rigor is a man, rigor is a micromanager. Mm. Oh. Or an overactive theatre director. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's, there's something that might be a bit meta about this. Um, with, uh, Eric put in the chat asking, you know, would the audience then have understood the Latin in performance? I suspect the audience for this play probably would. Um, you know, it might be for an educational setting, so it might be for boys learning Latin, or it might be uh, in a semi-court sort of circle uh, performance um, context. So um, I, I, I think that's probably there. I think also a lot of Latin is semi-explained by its context. 
as well not always but uh, i think it usually is so um mm. it's it's it, it today no then probably fine um helen uh there's a weird thing that probably appeals only to me the first um speech of basileus uh he says the most part of my debtors have honestly paid and they that were not ready i have gently dayed that is uh the use of um day as a verb today somebody is 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 really interesting to me because what he's actually saying is he's extended the term of the loan what you say is day is given to him to pay such and such or if you're extending it you say and a new day was given him yeah. this is a this is a very common thing in in um i mean i deal with a lot of municipal records and they've got a lot of debtors and they're continually having to give new day to people who can't pay but the idea of doing it gently doing it kindly to gently day somebody i think is a lovely um way of putting it um but it deferred uh, payment terms and granted yes, for a reasonable period yeah they they've yes but he's they've done it gen you know they've yeah. done it generously gently yeah yeah that's that's, that's a nice one excellent any other thoughts on this particular text lynn uh yeah i'm just it's it's very tantalizing because we i think we should be um whether we should trust basileus um and he's taking a, a philetus to to task for basically wasting the money that he's borrowed by living too large and wearing clothing that he that's too rich for his station in life it was huge concern in the early modern period you know they passed wave after wave of sumptuary laws telling people you can't wear this if you're not a lord kind of thing um so is yeah is the debtor a, a good person or a bad person or just a flawed person and uh and ten thousand talents is i mean i don't know if if the if the author actually understood how much money that is a, a talent is a huge amount of money and ten thousand talents that's it's like an absurdly large amount of money. Mm. So, well, the title of the play, and I think we've we we're confirmed it is the title of the play, um, uh, does say the cruel debtor. So presumably, he's going to do something cruel. What that is, we can yeah. decide. You know, we can we can. Uh, this is one of the plays where I think there's enough data here for it to uh, to put in an improv session, and and devise a play to go around it because I think actually there's a lot of fun in this uh there's a lot of business and then you can go off into so many different tangents uh alan um i've got a vague recollection we've looked at this piece before in a recording session yes. i can't remember whether it ever actually made it on the podcast or it did indeed all oh, right yes we are we are doing a certain amount of repeat uh, repeat uh, business the reason why we're doing this one specifically is because we've done all the other uh, w wager plays on youtube so i wanted to make sure this had a presence on youtube as well as on the podcast and also just to see if something different came out this time um which by the large by and large a couple of nice nice new thoughts have occurred makes me I, happy. I like the comment that eric's just put in chat about um possible modern equivalents of uh, Prenticus. Mm. Uh, Eric, do tell. Well, it's kind of like someone who thinks ahead, basically. Bronia is like before thinking. So like before something happens, you plan ahead. So I guess that would mean that Proniticus is not just the accountant, he's the planner. <laughs> well, yeah, as, sure. as a good accountant should be. Mm. Yeah, I and guess. A good, good courtier should be, isn't he? You know, especially, you know, try and figure out what the, what, what the, uh, the king wants before the king wants it um, is uh, an important yeah. skill. Uh, Lynn. Yeah, but yeah, I, I am still wondering about rigor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the way I have heard it used before is it rigor as opposed to law. So like injustice or excessive harshness. Um, but you know, what we've seen before is that vices or negative qualities masquerade as their opposites. Mm. So he's masquerading um, as humility. So then the opposite of humility would be pride. 
Mm. Yeah. So uh, what triggered such a question? Mm. Uh, Simon. Yeah, I think actually it's just come to me that uh, it, it must be intransigence because if you think rigor mortis, obviously, um, yeah, it's inflexibility. So perhaps it's that. Yeah. Mm. So, so many questions. Mm. So many questions. Sadly, no, we, we have nothing, nothing more at this time. But maybe, maybe someone will come up with a, a, a slightly more authoritative answer maybe you on the internet know do drop us a line put something in the comments uh do do let us know uh, and if you have know. the rest of the play in a uh, sock drawer please do bring it uh to our attention because it's quite fun yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's one of those where i'm going i'm quite quite sad we don't have the rest of this play because um there's there's a lot of fun business in this um a mm. lot of potential okay we're going to go to our final uh, text of the session turn the visit to love feigned and unfeigned uh, which is a play we think was printed, um, but has been then copied out as a manuscript. Um, it uh, it uh, was copied out um, in the early 17th century, apparently, uh, but we have a sort of general dating of somewhere in the 1560s, 70s-ish kind of thing. Um, and uh, But there's nothing particularly definite on all of that. Uh, we have five characters. I have technically um, changed one of the characters' designations to make it a little easier to read who you are. So technically, there's lo uh, there's love unfeigned and love feigned. I thought it was easier to swap it around and call it feigned love, um, just just so that you're you, you you're not reading running straight into something that's very similar. But we do have a play here with fellowship, familiarity, falsehood, feigned. We've got a lot. We've got a lot of F's going on. Let's see if this play provokes any other F's to stream up into the the, the, the air. So we don't know who the first speaker is. I'm assuming that it's fellowship. We will say that it is go fellowship. How may I do with him to meet? My heart is set on fire till I him see in present place, which is my heart's desire. No doubt, but love will present be his succor. For to lend he will unto you fellowship, his favours large extend. Enter love unfeigned. Lo, where he doth approach, one virtues which doth smell, his late nature low in virtuous ways doth passingly excel. O welcome sure unfeigned love, right welcome loving brother, whom I, as nature doth me blind, I love above all other. I thank you, familiarity, for your courtesy as always. Right glad I am your health to see condign of worthy praise. But who is this which by you stands? Declare my loving brother. Yea, fellowship, which should you love in heart above all other. Oh, fellowship, right glad I am to see you in good health and wish from heart that you may live in like increase of wealth. Praise be to Christ, which love hath to me sent. God give me grace, not from his counsels to relent. Your aid I crave me to assist my, against my deadly foe. You are the same which may me aid and bring me out of woe. Since my advice you do desire, if me you would embrace my qualities and footstep, all you must pursue apace. Love is my name indeed, whom all me do pursue, the sinful creatures and lovers of virtue. But mark what added is unto my name of love, unfeigned, by which word by reason we may prove that love unfeigned meaneth well and free from cruel vice. The holy writ doth term me grave and wise. Love by itself may be addict, as we may prove by reason, to virtue or to vice according to the season. There is love feigned contrary to my kind, which will provide thee to assault and change from thee my mind. I need betwixt God and his church tranquility and peace in labor's good to spend my time I love, to never cease 
as my beloved may by Paul declare whose words are these who can divide thee from the love of Christ which would him please wherefore me love embrace for Paul doth mention make to people of Corinthia mine author whom I make with tongue evangelical my words though I should show and have no love in me nor to his wishes should a sounding brass I should be called of reputation small in a happy state that man doth live which to me is bound and thrall I love am steadfast and in conversation mild I do not swell nor envy man woman or child St. John in his third epi episode May love commendeth St. Peter, likewise, whose writing unto me greeting sendeth, the holy prophet Solomon in Ecclesiastic declareth that each beast for his own passingly careth, whence let one man and another embrace. That is the mean to attain God his grace, Christ. Is in his gospel had me in mind as a thing most certain the learned may find though a man had of treasures abundance and lived with one out of uh, out love of his virtues assistance all were as nothing and assuredly vain wherefore good fellowship me love unfeigned attain Stay these your exhortations, O friend, love, celestial. I give you heart thanks as one of my friends' principal. I, fellowship, cannot quail, while familiarity and love to me be assistant. No vice my sense may move. Well, brother, love unfeigned, since fellowship is bent, our advice to imitate, he will sure be obsequent. Let us depart for a season out of place. I will await on you. Go we in God's grace. Content go we. And they jolly well go. Um, <laughs> and so that's the end of a, a unit of action there. Love, unfeigned love, beautiful, beautiful, unfeigned love there. Um, with fellowship and familiarity. It, it, doesn't it look like it's a lovely, lovely party they're having there of all the, the nice people. We don't, we don't linger enough on the nice people, do we? Um... I, I apologise to all the readers. I didn't warn you all that we were step changing to 14ers, and, but you know, it's, it, it really tricks you up when you've just been doing it in a different verse form and just going, ah, oh, oh, no, it doesn't, it, it keeps going. Where, 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 oh, <laughs> and everyone caught up very quickly. Well, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it really does uh, get you there. I apologise also that uh, once again, we, uh, we have a, a section without real punctuation. So, um, you know, if in doubt, just stop randomly and hope for the best. Um, um, I, I like Eric's comment in the chat. Um, uh, love has job references. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on love so far? There should be more. We should have more love. The, the, the love that St. Paul talks about in the... Uh, in, in the Latin translation is, is caritas, which is cognate with our word for charity. So it's, so he's trying to make clear that it's, it's this sort of more universal love, the love of mankind. The, the Greek word was agape, I think. So it's, it's different from amor. Uh, it's, it's brotherly love. Mm -hmm. That's why he keeps ref talk, uh, talking about St. Paul. It's that kind of love. Mm. Yeah, I mean, for some, for like, for being love, really doesn't like love feigned, uh, but yeah, loves everything but that. Um, but yeah. Well, it's the worst kind of love, isn't it? You know, false love. You know, just yeah. pretending to, you know, because that creates so much hurt in the world. You know, when someone, you know, just goes 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 through the motions. But yes, but as it kind of makes a show of loving everything else, so. It's a bit weird. <laughs> like, takes a takes a weird turn in the middle. Like, yeah. By the way, that's not not me. Not me. I am something else. You should follow me. But yeah. Uh, as opposed to the small robot uh, Colin, uh, who was programmed to be happy about <laughs> everything, including his own death. Um, you know, love should love everything, regardless of whether it, it's a good thing. Um, 
so yeah, uh, there, there's a, we found a contradiction in love. Love, love can can. Well, I suppose it's 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 unfeigned love, so it can't pretend when it loves something, but it can it can admit when it doesn't. Because that would be feigned love if it said it loved. And it didn't. Feigned love. <sighs> yeah, no, it does. It has an internal logic. It does. Yeah. It hurts, but it's there, Eric. <laughs> Yeah, but it's all sort of, it's not like romantic love as we were talking about. It's basically religious or like linked to like spiritual type things or, you know, um, all, all, uh, so I'm, I kind of can't help but wonder if this is like one of those, well, I don't know what mor- morality plays look like, but it looks like that kind of that biblical slash morality slash religious front um, play. I like that. Biblical slash religious rant type play. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it's better than morality play, isn't it? It's, 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 it's much clearer. I think it, uh, it, um, it, it gets to the heart of things. Let's get a little more evidence. Uh, so they've all exited um, with the, uh, for the exciting reason of because um, we should go now because there's nothing else to say in this scene. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> enter falsehood alone. God save ye, my master. God save ye this blessed day. Why stare ye at me thus? I ween ye come to see a play, and in faith so. Me, I can teach you if you come to my school, for all worldly things I disdain a fool. Solomon, in his Proverbs, disdaineth fools, so do I. If you read this book of wisdom, ye may see if I lie. It is a strange world when a fool begins to prate of holy scripture. Ye may see, I am a man of blessed state. My name is falsehood, and of great reputation, all worldly men and wise have me in admiration. I can speak fair to a man and embrace him as my brother, whom inwardly I disdain and hate above all other. All states of men me cherish and falsehood embrace. I am accepted as a man of noble grace. Falsehood by the mass is beloved. None at all is beloved. None at all him detest. But such be ideates and with beggary oppressed. Wherefore, my masters, if in riches and in wealth ye would abound, ye must practice deceit and stealth. Fear nothing to swear by his nails, wounds, or blood so thou may have thy purpose and increase thy good. Though some man should say that of wealth thou hast plenty, thou must always feign that thy purse is but empty. I pray, I pray ye what man goeth through the wood, but he may play two faces in one hood. By the mass he may live in tranquility and ease, every man will be glad and studious him to please. But some man would marvel admiration have what I what I do pray to here ever as God may me save to speak with one fellowship whom I thought to be in place. Enter feigned love. But God knows I must weep, must weep, lo, oh, I must weep apace, because I cannot find him. This love feigned. Alas, Dear brother upon fellowship, we both, we all both disdain. Oh, I must needs weep. I, oh, I have a great loss. Fellowship promised to be here, but he is a knave by the mass. Be merry, man, let lamentations pass. Fellowship will be our own as he ever was. Fellowship quoth he, if he want um, his and his, me, okay. Yeah. By the mass, I by the mass I love shall cause him his. It's torn. Um, <laughs> if fellowship be long absent, I swear by her finger, I will fetch him out by the mass if that he do linger. Oh ho! If that fellowship were present, he should see what I could do. I falsehood could properly allure him from love to great woe. Enter fellowship. But lo, by the mass, here he cometh unto place. You shall see how brave I shall salute his grace. Now by the mass, I am glad of this, his presence. 
O oh, heavenly Father of a celestial intelligence, to thee be praised for thy gifts innumerable. innumerable. <laughs> Through thy virtues I am become stable to know thy blessed will and such company to use as may be for thy glory. God bless me from abuse. Thy favour I ask, my life to direct, and from my enemies my deadly foes abject. Ah, of cog's blood, hear ye all. Holy Pope, holy by the mass, good man fellowship is more holy than he ever was. We must work by policies for to convert his mind, or else our labor is lost, we shall be sure to find. But, oh, loving God, what whites be there in sight? Your friends, Master Fellowship, if ye merk right. If you be my friends, the more welcome to my presence. Sir, we would gladly make you a man of intelligence. If you to our council's attendance would give, we shall teach you a passing trade to live. Oh God, I am sorry. I must weep at your lost state, that you make you a fool and with fools do mate. Those which, you, which be your friends be sorry for your case, to see such beastly fools your worship disgrace. Ye and I, I from weeping from, may not myself refrain. All men of honesty, your folly is disdain. A beggar they do term you, they say you so will do. Consider, man, consider family askew. With, uh, familiarity askew. Eschew? Uh, familiarity eschew. <laughs> With love unfeigned that brother follow me virtue. Hang the slaves, hang them if they come in my way. What f do I force with my sword them to slay? If any I should displease them of mercy, I crave at their obedience or their pleasure. They surely shall me have. Oh, lively said by Gog's wounds, I see you will be a man. Fellowship is ours, nay say who can. Yea, but fellowship, since to us ye do incline, you must eschew familiarity, that lout and swain. Must you be a companion with every slave? Must you give to the beggars all that you have? Let them go on packing to St. Quintin's Hall. Whip them out of your company when on you they call. Mark their weed and their pretensed holiness. That they make one believe they were men of greatness. If you accord with Solomon my counsels embrace, for he all fools disdaineth as men devoid of grace. Ye and you must love feignedly your Christian brother. Tell him one tale and think in heart another. Should every slave know the secrets of your mind? No, no, I would deceive them. Thus heirs be... Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, mark me nowadays if there be an heir of lands. How they practice by falsehood to have it out of his hands. Well, if you should study familiarity to please, where you be a gentleman, should you not be worth two peas? Oh, they will cap him and sugared words render. They will seem as that much yourself they do tender. All is to have your ha lands in their possession, which if they may attain by any condition, then may ye go alone with a flea in your ear. Yen yender goeth the, the heir of Lynn. Ye may see by his gear. Let him pack as a beggar unto the beggar's school, such is the end of every fool. Love fain hath touched your state very learnedly, wherefore imitate him and his ways attentively. Yea, surely that he hath I perceived by reason that fellowship came hither in a very fit season. I see my lands might have come from hundredth to pence. They would have enticed me to such expense than you as my lovers I fellowship embrace, desiring your assistance to God shall give me grace. I perceive by your communication and ingenious talk, you can easily discern good cheese from chalk. Yea, or else God defend, I am one of antiquity. I have reigned many years in the ancient progeny. If Rebecca and Jacob had not, my, had, not had my advice, they had not wrought Esau with such a proper guise. I see you fellowship have intelligence of divinity. Be sure the best learned of, be of my affinity. I reign as an imperial magistrate in, at Rome. I am honored in all nations where I so come. He that hath not my practice in his conversation 
is termed an ass and rude in communication. Since we well accord and have joys at our pleasure, let's indict a song for mirth is a treasure. To that I could, I myself will sustain you with a, with sustain with you apart. And I will follow you with all my heart. I will ask fellowship to sing. He doesn't need to sing. Oh, thank you. Sing we, sing we with joyful heart, since fellowship so doth incline a trusty friend, which will not start, but we a faithful friend in fine. Jet one and other his embrace, as faithful friends he want to be one to do. Where love commands, there is God's grace. They lead their lives devoid of woe. Me fellowship embrace so dear, the loving as my senses move. O oh, pleasant friend, O oh, brother near, in health and wealth. God grant you grow. God gives us joys and Nestor's days, a life in virtues to excel. For thy virtues I must you praise, and so I must, for I farewell. And they all stop singing because it was so lovely, and fellowship <laughs> continues. <laughs> well sung, my friends. <laughs> I would we should go hence, go we to banquet and spare no pence. Content, go we ye merry masters, falsehood cannot quail. Be sure then, I shall always prevail. <laughs> and they exit. Um, that's an interesting song, actually. I'm quite interested to see how it's broken up, whether it is broken up between the various singers, um, or whether they're singing it all together all at once. Um, lots of interesting things there. Um, so yeah, fellowship being separated from the others. It's a divide and conquer by the vices kind of thing set up again uh falsehood oh he's a wrong one um yeah all sorts of things thoughts in the room what's the difference between familiarity and fellowship um a distinction without more, a not a lot of difference um, yeah you can be Maybe it's just the, the same thing, but just in slightly different ways. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. Do not know the answer. Fellowship would carry to me more implication of um, solidity, whereas familiarity would be much more casual. Hmm. I would see it the other way around, you know, um, my familiar friend or a good fellow. You know, familiar familiar would be close. Well, I would have thought would have been closer. Well, but it might be, might be, it might be actually. Yeah, it might be. It's suggestive of familiar. You know, the familial uh, connection that there's um, family, perhaps. Yeah. Hmm. So fellowship family. cannot fellowship cannot quail while familiarity and love, to me, be assistant. Hmm. So, fr so if it's friends, family, and and love of you know, God, um, they feel like plausible cornerstones of a good, good Christian life. Mm. Mm. Maybe read one for companionship and one for actual relationship, perhaps. Mm. 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 Any idea of the heir of Lynn? I, I've, I've no idea what the hell that's about. Um, <laughs> Lynn... <laughs> Lynn, if I saw Lynn written down, I would immediately assume it was King's Lynn. Because mm. the King's was usually omitted. Mm. Well, it had previously been Bishop's Lynn, hadn't it? It had indeed, I believe, but um, I've never actually, in Elizabethan, I've never seen it written as Bishop's Lynn. No, I, I think the change was um, pre Tudor. Mm. Yeah, I think it must have been. From recollection. I mean, you occasionally see Lynn Regis, which makes you think it ought to be Lyme Regis, but it isn't. It's yeah. always Lynn. Mm. No, I, I mean, I had business connections there at one time, so uh, I got to know a little bit about the town. Mm. But, you know, I don't know if it is referring to a place or whether it's just Lyme or, or uh, you know, if there's, there's some other meaning there. I just... Uh, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, there's lots of lots of questions with this because, of course, the absence of wider context, it's harder to answer where meanings might be 
might be placed. Um, fellowship is presumably a bit of a bore, uh, the way he comes on and falsehood and feigned love just turn to each other. Oh, he's off again. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 he's always doing this. He's sermonizing again. Sermonizing. Um, bless his cotton socks. Um, I hate to say this, but it leaves me with no great desire to see the rest of the play. No, yeah. it, it feels a bit worthy, doesn't it? It does feel a bit worthy. Um, it's interesting, but it's not exactly grabbing me uh, in, in, in the same way. Um, I mean, you know, the thing is, all of these plays are basically doing the same job. You know, there's, 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 there's actually a relatively small series of plots that interludes, moral interludes are playing around with. And, you know, this is, this is one of some vices turn up, they pretend to be somebody else, they divide the, uh, the, 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 the good guys and in their weakened state take them over and then they're defeated. I mean, that's basically the plot. Um, and, you know, elements of that are in the last one, the cruel debtor, you know, we've got vices coming in and um, they've, they've managed to appropriate one person at least. Um, uh, they're presumably going to make the cruel debtor do something cruel because mm -hmm. they're vices um, and, you know, to work their ends, not his own. So, yeah, it's, it, we're talking about punctuation, the absence of punctuation in the text, but it basically goes first line set up, second line close. Mm. There's very little sustained thought. So it becomes very da dum 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 um, because it's, it's not ringing the changes very much. Short on events too. Yeah. It's all about ideas. I mean, the one, the debtor one, there was a lot going on. Mm. Yes. We crammed into three, three fragment, uh, three, four fragments, um, you know, an A plot and a B plot. Yeah. And, um, and a little, a little fighting. Yeah. Always good to and, have um, and a certain amount of, I, I mean, rigor um, doing his mock weeping. I mean, mm. it's, it's, it's very visual. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, Wager was very theatrically minded. I, he had a mm. very good dynamic understanding of what to do. And that doesn't mean he doesn't play in with moral themes and get quite heavy at times, but he does manage to ring the changes. Um, you know, the man knew how to put a show together. There's a mm. reason, I think, why he got a play printed it almost every year or so for four or five years. Um, you know, he, he put on a play, he got it printed, moved on. Um, I mean, even somebody and others, the first uh, sort of text that was sort of play, um, you know, we got someone chucked down a well or, you know, or down a hole. Um, you know, something happened. We got some vices being a bit vicey, um, planning, plotting, and then uh, yeah, incident, actual act and action. So yeah, we're into extra time. So any sort of just we got three and a bit fragments. I'm 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 sort of reserving the right to uh, on the first part of a play to not really say there's much to say about that. It's a speech, um, but it's certainly in terms of uh, improving and turning these into. Fun mini shows, uh, if not, you know, a pucker full, full on show. Um, well, I, th I think we're getting a sense of a favourites and a, a lack of favourites in the room. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite keen on doing more with these because they are orphans and alone. And, you know, they, they need feeding up and given, given a bit more. Um, so final thoughts in the room about what might be might be done. Uh, Simon, Simon. After, after having handed you all your favourite things today. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was quite nice playing slightly obsequious people. Um, no, I, I think, yeah, no surprise. The only one I'd ever be interested in revisiting really is the cruel data. <laughs> um, because it, it did actually, it left, a few of us said, left me a bit intrigued. Um, I, I, I've already forgotten what the first piece was. Um, Part of a play, that's right. <laughs> um, I don't know what you would do with that. 
mm. frankly, uh, other than uh, maybe have people throw things at him as a kind of comedy of someone, someone trying to battle on regardless of people are throwing their mugs at him on stage. I don't know. Um, I, 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 I struggle to visualize any of them as we were reading them, which for a director is quite difficult. Um, but that's my honest appraisal. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I would do with any of them if I'm being very honest. Okay. Um, Eric, Eric, uh, any final thoughts? Doesn't have to be too practical. Uh, favorites? Yeah, favorites? I was going to say the, the one that would probably most likely be um, stageable, sort of thing, is um, the, the Cruel Debtor and maybe the Verity one. But I, I think you, you'd have to like workshop them and see what happens because, like, you know, by themselves, they're kind of like tiny. <laughs> As for part of a play, I don't know, it's just interesting that, like, sort of, to have that and compare it with the sermon, as you said earlier. Um, yeah. Hmm. That might be an action point to do. We, if we haven't done any sermons, maybe we should, we should do a few, um, uh -huh. whether we have enough time in a session. <laughs> Some of them are not sure. Um, <laughs> He said some of them are not sure. Uh, <laughs> Alan, final thoughts. You've been no, here before, I'm, of course, from almost all of this. Yeah, and the, the, the one I think that is worth maybe exploring a bit more is the cruel data, because there's enough of it there to actually make something from it. And I think one could probably, you, you probably wouldn't need to put much in the way of a pro, uh, preparatory material to it but you would need to find to construct some form of resolution of the plot um but probably not at excessive length mm. and i think that that could be an interesting one to work on and it's got more i i certainly found that more engaging than the other pieces the other thing to well you know we could always go commission writers to uh, to come up with plays to go around this but uh, i quite like the idea of improving them Though in the case of uh, Lady Verity, um, or whatever, somebody and others, is if the uh, French play uh, is extant and usable, then we might actually have a play we can basically wadge around it that, uh, mm. you know, that we translate and see, depending on how similar they are. If they're very similar, then uh, we might be able to effectively recreate yeah. that play. Job, um, job for Dan. Yeah, and just keep the bit, keep the bit that um, we've already got um, uh, as is, and then just uh, scaffold the rest. So uh, that might be a possibility. Lynn, any final thoughts? Oh, n not much. I I am kind of intrigued by the uh, the cruel debtor because it it seems to kind of go against expectations or leave some really interesting questions unanswered. I mean, usually in uh, usually in the in the this tradition that the debtor is someone that the audience feels compassion for that's supposed to be that character is we feel we'll feel bad for people who are, are in debt because that's you know some a, a problem that ordinary people often experience and so it, and this text seems to be maybe more critical of him the the, the title and the fact that the king whom we presumably can trust is saying you borrowed all this money and then wasted it so I mean, it's, it's it is really intriguing and really provocative and i like things that kind of tend to to you know go against traditions or or fall out of patterns that i'm used to seeing excellent valentina uh final thoughts from you but yeah, I kind of agree with pretty much everybody that's, that's has spoken so far. I mean, a cruel data is it's got more to go on, even to improvise. Um, I don't know for some reason for me it's it, it feels very Pinocchio, but that is just um, I think it's the dynamic between the vices and that is kind of like slightly. But anyway, um, but I'd be interested to see the French play um, mm. if. Yeah, that'd be nice. Right. Well, we, we, we've definitely gone action action on that. Uh, Helen, have I come to you for a final thought? No. Yeah. Um, well, for me, I would say, having viewed your um, orphan kittens, um, I would leave them entirely to the academics who may or may not be short of something new for their 
um, next article. And for from an acting point of view, I think the best you could do with them would be um, a bag, a brick, and a canal. Well, that that that's that's clearly not what we're going to do, Helen. So. Oh. <laughs> All right, fair enough. But you respond um, everything. There's, I'm just going to. Oh just no, no, no! I think it's right. I think it's right to record them. It's right to do them. But I don't think, to be honest, that they're worth more effort. Um, we have no no love from the room for love feigned and unfeigned. Uh, 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 therefore, I feel like I need to champion it at the end. It just seems to be my 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 thing of just. Leaning into that wind and just just battling forward. Um, I I think I think there's more there. I think there's a there's a, a, a philosophical narrative about love that's that's potential there. We've we've done a play, the play of love, which is a very different play to be honest. But um, you know these these idea plays uh, have a place, and um, I think that's a challenge. You know, if we ever have a commissioning budget to hire writers, that's one I'd hand to a writer, I think, rather than improv. I feel very much we've got um, cr cruel debtor. Uh, what the way I see f for cruel debtor, uh, and we may notice similarities with cruel debtor elsewhere in the week um, for those who are uh, for certain sessions. Um, I quite like the idea of doing a William Wager evening, possibly the first half, looking at some parts of plays and this quite firmly and then the second half maybe a cut down version of one of one of his plays as as an evening of the, of theater plus history in combo because I, I i think there's a lot to him that uh, potentially might work today uh, even if it doesn't need a certain amount of additional work um i definitely think part of the play is probably going to be recorded as a piece of audio by someone um, and that will go on the podcast and I probably will genuinely just forget about it um, because of the lack of certainty that it is a play uh, if nothing else and of course somebody and others if we find um, the French and we find it goes together then that's basically a play we should do um, just have to translate the French um, so anyone got half an hour you know I'm sure you can manage Nicholas Nickleby managed it in a couple of days as I recall and he added a pump so um yeah weekends work weekends work um so that's all that uh is is us for this fragment session we've probably got one more fragment session uh, coming up sometime in the future we've only got a few more uh plays uh, ones we've done before um but it's quite nice to test them with a, a new room uh there are potentially others that we haven't done before uh, in the future but uh, I'm running low on low hanging fruit when it comes to fragmentary plays uh, some of them are less fragmentary than you'd think so all that remains is to thank all the wonderful readers today and farewell bye